Hello, so my name is Emily and today I'm going to share a few things from my week. So um, last week New Zealand went back to level 2, which meant that the children could go back to school. So they went back to school on Thursday and on Friday and today they're back at school again. My husband is back at work and I have a quiet house again. So um, last week I made some biscuits with Joseph. Um, I tried a new recipe which was off the back of this <coughs> cranberry packet so I'm going to share that recipe because they turned out really nice and a uh, pudding which just uses staple ingredients that I think most people would always have on hand and it's a really delicious one it's a self-sourcing one and it's called mocha fudge pudding so it's like a chocolate self-sourcing pudding but it also has a little bit of coffee in it um, and then my pizza dough recipe I used quite a bit this last week and I tried making different things for the other than pizza so I'm going to show you that and I also made soup from some leftovers, so I want to show you that as well. And then I've been thinking a lot this week about the change that the coronavirus has brought. So for us personally, it hasn't really affected us that much. We haven't lost income really. My husband's still gotten paid. He hasn't lost his job. We haven't had it ourselves. We haven't lost any friends or anybody with it. We don't know really anybody close to us that has died from it. Um, so yeah, really for us it's just been a bit of an inconvenience, but I know that for a lot of people in the world it has affected them a whole lot more. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who wish life could just go back to the way it was before the virus. Um, one, of our, one of our girls the other day who really doesn't like change said, I wish it could just go back to before the virus and have none of those restrictions and everything anymore. Um, and that daughter she doesn't like change at all so at the moment my husband is working on our new kitchen and she doesn't see why on earth we need a new kitchen she thinks it's fine just the way it was she'd rather things just never change and always stay the same and I think we're all we all can be a little bit like that we don't like change change can be scary and uncomfortable and yet just like with our kitchen we can never get something better unless we're willing to go through the changing process which can be difficult but anyway, so the virus hasn't really affected us that bad, but uh, it reminds me of when our daughter Lydia was born. She had, has Down syndrome and had heart problems and was in hospital a lot her first year. And there are many times I thought, I wish life could just go back to the way it was before she was born. Because when she was born, she brought a lot of complications with her and our lives really changed. They became more complicated and... Uh, we were in hospital a lot and there were times I really wish we could just go back to the way it was before she was born. So I can relate to people who find the virus difficult in that way. I can, I can understand how you could want it to just go back to the way it was before. Um, and yeah, there can be lots of different changes that happen in our lives that we wish we could go back to the way it was before. And yet, most of the time you can't just go back. But, um, so anyway, I was thinking back to that time and I was trying to think of what things helped me with accepting the changes. So I wrote down about eight different things that I found helpful and so I'm going to share them as well. I'm experimenting with my pizza dough recipe. This morning, yeah, Joseph made this little loaf with cheese on top, and I made this pull apart bread, and I made six buns. I'm gonna try using my pizza dough recipe to make raisin bread. Well, without the cinnamon, Johan likes just white bread with raisins in it, so see how it works. I'm making some more buns tonight for the kids lunch boxes tomorrow so this time I did half wholemeal flour and I'm doing cheese on top and we'll see how they turn it out. The, ra the raisin ones yesterday were really nice. So yesterday I did pork chops in the slow cooker with curry, cumin and beef stock. 
Now I used to just throw the liquid away from things like that, but this time I made some soup out of it. It turned out really nice. This is the leftovers that we had for dinner. So another way to use up leftovers. So um, the first one is, there's a Bible verse in Esther where it says, Who knows whether you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Now when Lydia was six months old, she had heart surgery. That went well, we came back home, we'd been home one week and she got sick again. And so we had to take her into hospital and before we knew it, we were back up at the Auckland hospital where she'd had her heart surgery. And we were told that she had a complication from her heart surgery and it could take up to a month of being in that hospital for it to get better. And for me, I thought we were over the worst because, um, you know, we were over the heart surgery. She'd recovered from that. And here we were with a long recovery ahead of us back in the hospital. And it ended up being nearly twice as long as what the doctor said. Well, yeah, I think it was nearly two months before we could go home. Um, but anyway, this verse came into my mind. Who knows whether you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Now, that was for Esther. That was what Mordecai said to Esther when the Jews were going to be all killed and Esther had become the queen and through her she was able they were saved she was able to go to the king and speak on behalf of her people but um, I thought well you know who knows maybe God has let this happen maybe God wants us here for a reason who knows why we are back in hospital now who knows maybe the people we're going to speak to or yeah who knows why there may be some special reason why we're back in hospital now and so that thought just um yeah helped me another one um i found helpful back when lydia was first born and we were in hospital and everything was uncertain and we were trying to adjust to everything and um that is an acceptance lie of peace and there's a little poem which says an acceptance lie of peace oh my heart be still let thy restless worries cease and accept his will Though this test be not thy choice, it, it, it is his, therefore rejoice. So our situation was not at all something I would have chosen. And yet this little poem says it is God's choice, so rejoice. So that was really helpful to me. Instead of trying to fight against it, instead of praying really hard that would go home as soon as possible, I learned to just accept that this God had allowed this or brought this situation for our good. Um, and yeah, to accept instead of fighting. And later on, um, back when we were, after that first year when we were home again and kind of things settled down, I also didn't like the change that um, came with the Down syndrome and the heart problems because we had so many appointments and things we had to go to and so many people involved with Lydia. It just, um, yeah, our life just became really complicated and complex. Um, one time we had to go to an appointment and I was just thinking about all the different appointments we had been to and I just, I really hate the pressure of going to appointments. And um, this quote came to my mind, I think I'd read it somewhere, it says, The impatient horse which will not quietly endure his halter only strangles himself in his stalls. So if you just fight against the things that are going on in your life, you just only really hurt yourself. You don't help, it doesn't help anything. Um, so yeah, sometimes there are things we can change, but sometimes we just have to accept what we can't change. So yeah, accepting, just accepting rather than trying to fight against it all the time. Um, and another one, which is kind of along the same lines, um, and that is the story of Jacob when he was wrestling with, I guess it was an angel. Um, so somebody came and was wrestling with him and... Yeah, I don't think he knew who it was at first, but later on he realized that it was really fighting against God or against an angel. And I listened to a sermon which really helped me with this. And it was, yeah, I was struggling with the busyness and the complications that had come through Lydia. And the preacher was talking about the story of Jacob, how he was wrestling against God. And he probably didn't realize it at first. He could have thought it was an enemy. And how sometimes things happen in our lives and we fight against them because we don't like it. And yet we don't realize that it is actually God working in our lives. God wants to change us and to bring, you know, good changes in our lives. And yet to us, we don't like the changes and we don't always see that it is God who is working in our lives. And so we fight against it. And so that story, um, yeah, that, that sermon just really helped me to see that it was God who was trying to change me through all the pressures and 
all the busyness and that I needed to accept it and pray that God would um, yeah just to let God change me and not try to fight against it all the time um, number four is to see it as a challenge to learn new lessons and to grow if we never had any hard times or any challenges we would never grow we would never change and although change is hard and painful um, yeah that's how we grow and learn new things so see it as a positive thing it's a challenge to learn new things and grow and I know for us we learned so many things through Lydia and although it's not a change we would have chosen I am glad because I'm glad that God gave her to us because he has changed us for good and brought so much good out of it in our lives number five is to look for the good so um, Romans 8 28 promises that all things work together for good to those who love God and this was the verse I thought about it when Lydia was first born and I found it really hard that our children had to um, our children were sent, I don't know, four and a half, five hours away to my parents, but we didn't know when we were going to see them again, and everything was so uncertain, we didn't know if it would work out, because it was so far away, to be able to see them. And so I was thinking about this verse, all things work together for good, and yet I just couldn't see how it could be good that we were separated, that I couldn't look after my children, I felt very guilty about that. So anyway, I just had to pray and give my children to God, give the situation to God, and trust that He would work all things together for good, even though I couldn't see how. Um, the other day I was making a big lot of spaghetti sauce in my slow cooker, and I'd put in all the mints, I had raw mints in there, I'd put in some spices, and I still needed to put the pasta sauce in. And anyway, Esther came and my daughter Esther came and looked in the slow cooker and said, What are you making? And I said, oh, I'm making spaghetti sauce. And she looked at it and said, that does not look like spaghetti sauce to me. All she could see was the raw mints and the spices, and it didn't look like spaghetti sauce in that stage. And I thought it's kind of a good picture of how we see things and how God sees things. God sees the big picture and what he is doing in our lives. And we see the things, you know, that's raw, that does not look good. And we say, how on earth could that be good? And yet we have to trust God that he knows what he's doing in our lives and that it is working together for good, even though things in themselves might not be good. Um, and number six is the verse, he giveth more grace. So one time when I was in hospital with Lydia, we'd been in there, I don't know, two months. And it still seemed like we might be there for a very long time before we could go home again. Now, I'd worked out that it, we weren't there much longer, but at the time, we just seemed like there was no light at the end of the tunnel, and I was sick of being in hospital. I was missing my children, and I just said to God, I can't do it anymore. It's, it's been not long enough. I can't do it anymore. And the verse came to my mind, He giveth more grace. And no matter how hard things get or how much we feel we can't handle it anymore, God always gives us more grace. There is always more grace to help us. So number seven is, our disappointments are God's appointments. Now this is a quote that somebody messaged me when, uh, it was just before Lydia had her heart surgery, and we had gone up to Auckland, we dropped our children off at my family, and um, the day before she was supposed to have her operation, I think it was, the doctors rang up, or somebody from the hospital rang up and said that her surgery was going to be postponed till the next week. Uh, because it was just so busy and they had so many surgeries and for me that was really disappointing mostly because I knew the longer it got postponed the longer the recovery would be and the longer before we could go home and you know especially because our children were not with us you know I didn't want it to be too long before we could see them again and so that kind of stressed me out a little bit and somebody sent me this message our disappointments are God's appointments and I was very thankful for that message because it reminded me that God was still in control I was feeling frustrated the doctors and feeling like they were <laughs> messing things up and yet it was God who was in control it wasn't things were not in the doctor's hands they were in God's hands and so I didn't need to get stressed and worried and frustrated about it all so whatever happens even if people make mistakes and um, yeah, we need to remember that God is still in control. We don't need to worry too much about what decisions people make. Um, but to remember that God is still in control no matter what and that we can trust Him. And number eight is to think how it might have been worse. Think of ways that it could have been worse than what it is. So for Lydia, you know, she could have been paralyzed. I, I was reading Joni Erickson once, a book about her, and I just thought, man, 
you know, it would be such a bigger thing to be paralyzed than to have Down syndrome and heart problems. Like, Lydia took a very long time to learn to walk, but she did learn to walk. And all the things that are delayed for her, well, most of them she will still learn to do, just take longer. So for me, it is more positive to think of Down syndrome compared to things that are worse, because then they don't seem so bad. Or we met some people who had twins, and, you know, one had Down syndrome, one didn't, or they both both twins had heart problems or both twins were sick or had different problems so for me it didn't seem quite so overwhelming to think well I've only got one child with these problems I don't have twins I don't have double so whatever our situation is it can be helpful to think of other people with worse situations or to think how it could have been worse and then it makes our situation seem a little bit less and also, I didn't write this down, but I think um, whatever challenges we do have, um, yeah, we need to draw close to God and to get to know Him more. And because if we do that, then whatever problems we do have, they will work together for our good. They will change us for the better, and we will grow through it. So I hope these thoughts are helpful for whatever change you have that you do not like. It is good that we do have things that happen that we wouldn't choose, because I Otherwise, we would never learn certain things. So I hope it is encouraging to somebody. Hello, lad. Is it windy? How long have you timed it for?